uh, get clarity on uh, happenings during the uh, voting, the casting of ballots for the voting of the uh, Speaker of Parliament. Yeah. Exactly what happened. Well, first of all, I think I must say that what happened in Parliament yesterday mm. was most comprehensible, most regrettable, most unfortunate. Uh, members of Parliament engaging in voting and they quarreling yeah. over the processes and procedures of voting. I think it's most unfortunate and must be condemned. It all started when we um, were to position the booths and the ballot box. Yes. This is not the first time that we are having secret voting in Parliament. True. Sure. And there's never been any such incident. Anytime we have resorted to secret voting, there's never been any such incident. So, how this came about to me, as I said, most unfortunate, and we should ensure that these incidents don't have further procreation in the house. The signals that they sent to uh, the international friends, yeah. about parliament itself yeah. certainly as I said most regrettable and it should never yeah. be repeated so honorable in, in order to, uh, for this not to be repeated uh, those who were uh, responsible for this how, how are they going to be uh, uh, punished or held accountable for what happened well um, it doesn't lie in only uh, my mouth only to determine what will happen. I think as as uh, a house, we should come to some determination on this together. Uh, unfortunately, uh, some of the leaders were themselves even involved. involved. Yeah. You know, uh, seizing ballot boxes, trying to smash ballot boxes, and so on, on three different occasions. And the culmination of the events was when one also smashed the ballots and attempted to, run to do whatever with it. Yeah. with it. Certainly not the best. Uh, but let me say for purposes of the records, yeah. because I understand that um, somebody has put it out somewhere that Bagbin was declared as the uh, elected speaker on account of the fact that he, he had vote. 138 votes. Okay. There's no truth in that. It's false? There's no truth in that. H how is that? So what exactly was the... Where were the figures? What happened was... The... Uh, ballots after the voting. Yeah. You fold the papers before you put them in the... In the, in the ballot box. Okay. So the counting officers, when they came to do it, who are just um, officers of parliament, they were stretching out the ballots one by one. Subsequently, so when they started, I even asked them what they were doing. And they said they were just straightening out the ballots to later count. And as is usual, you do that and then you count the number of papers to see whether they correspond to the number of people who were supposed to cast the ballots. Okay. Subsequently, so they counted about 10. They, they stretched out about 10 and put them on one side. Subsequently, they started uh, putting some of the papers to one side and then when they lifted one up, uh, the one would say that, well, to this, to the right or to the left. Mm -hmm. So I asked them again, but you have told me that you were stretching them out to do the counting later. Then one of them also said, oh, we now want to do the sorting out. And I said, okay. But then I got the impression then that the first thing that, that we had done, then perhaps will not conform to this new formula that is sorting out into um, the, the two camps that I'm talking about, the two persons contesting. Okay. 
So when they finished, they counted one. They, they piled to one side. And then they saw that the number had uh, got into 136. And they pulled one out, which they said uh, was rejected because the person had marked for two people. They had marked for Professor Kui and marked for Bakpi. Right? It, it looks like he wanted to cancel out one. Oh, okay. So that one was set aside. Mm. And that then gave Okui 136 votes. They were then to count the other one. And then I called Anodon Pre. But because of the initial observation that I made, and which I have just told you, I said you come and stand there while they were counting to ensure that every single one of the banners would have been checked for Bagby or otherwise, or if there was any problem then who will raise the issue okay so i was asking another prayer to move from his place to come and be at where they were doing the the, sorting. the counting okay for parking and then as i said to have an eagle's eye to ensure that every single one of them had been checked for parking just when i was calling him um carlos ahinkra came for the box approached me okay then the statement was that ah, leader, see, in Tinaho, Emma, and this for him when he no one first speaker. Nah, to which we just sit down and allow the NDC to win the speakership. And I asked him, where is this coming from? We have finished the voting. We are doing the counting. So where is this coming from? And in any event, what is it that you want to do? Please get away from here. Get away from here. So I was even shouting at him that he should get away from me. Okay. I don't know what happened. So just when he pretended he was leaving me, I saw him run. That was when he snatched the, ballots, the, the street. Okay. Snatched the ballots and attempted to bolt away with it. Whereupon he was overpowered by our officials from the martial department. And I think they succeeded in retrieving okay. the ballots from him. When they did, they gave the ballots to Muntaka. And uh, they then went to, uh, together with the martial arts people and the clerks, they went to the speaker's holding room. Later, they came to call me and Haruna. Okay. And said that uh, Bagbeng had won. They said to me that Bagbeng had won, that we should consider that Bagbeng had won. And I said, on what account? I asked them, on what account? Because the rules provide Mm -hmm. that in a contest involving two people the person who receives the, the greater most, number yeah. shall be declared the winner we have seen that prof had 136 yeah right yes now how do you automatically then say that the other person has the 138 when the one was the rejected. votes have not been counted okay right yeah but i i went on to say that yes i agree that you have the ballots. Um, Muntaka, you have the ballots in your, in your hands. And I made a preliminary statement that because of what my own colleague had also done, the, the, the ballots have been retrieved. And you, Muntaka, you are not supposed to be the person who have custody of these ballots, but you have them. Is that to so say that... So on account of these two incidents, mm -hmm. one could say that the integrity of the ballots that you are, you are holding have been I'm compromised. But however, for purposes of whatever it may be worth, can we count the ballot that you have in your hands? That is for um, because you told me that you have everything. When I asked, then they said, "Oh, then he said, oh, the ballot that you have uh, is light." He thinks that uh, the member might have done something with a couple of them. So I said, "What do you have?" When finally we counted, and I'm saying, I must admit mm -hmm. that uh, because of what happened, the fact that the guy took them away, they were retrieved. The fact that everything then that was retrieved was given to Muntaka. Yeah. The two, the two situations will compromise the integrity of the ballots yeah. that eventually found uh, um, uh, their way into the hands of Muntaka. But when they came to count, it was 136. 
You mean for you mean for um honorable Bagbing? And one yes, one three six for Bagbing. So they both got one three six. Okay. For okay. But then clearly, and I must admit, as I've said, that that second one, you would one can say that has been compromised. To what extent? Nobody knows. So you couldn't then rely on that. So we had some backwards and forwards and the the NDC people were saying that we should declare back being the winner. Uh, on account of the fact that if Prof had had one three six and one was spoiled, right? Yeah. It means the one three eight would have gone to him to Pakben. And I said, these ones that have been, you know, stacked for Prof. You know, even when we were counting, one got spoiled. So how can you then say that all one three eight? So one three eight was outstanding. But how can you say that all one three eight uh, would be genuine votes for Pakben? You cannot say so. Our orders provide that in any such contest involving two people, the person who has the greater number should be declared the winner. But clearly, and you couldn't say that Babbing has the greater number because that, that number officially never got to be counted. But, At this time, we have sat from 12 midnight to 8 o'clock in the morning. Right? Yeah. And we're not making progress. And that was how come then we decided to see the best way forward to have some compromises. So we consulted extensively amongst ourselves. And I know the NDC was consulting their leadership and we were also consulting our leadership. And given the fact that heads of state have been invited and then, as I said, at the time it was past eight and uh, the program was supposed to start at 11, that is swearing in the president, and guests were required to be seated at 10 o'clock it was past eight and we're not making progress and for eight hours we were on this so as part of then we had to have some compromise uh, um, uh, uh, honorable, um quick one I, I just wanted to clarify something um if uh, honorable bagbin's um, figures were 136 and um honorable okay's was also 136 that would leave apart from the one which was destroyed an outstanding one where did that go not it will not leave an outstanding one. It will leave an outstanding two. Outstanding two, yes. Yes, that was where the difficulty was. And in reality, we should have a rerun. So I first began by urging my colleagues that where we are, uh, we should have a rerun. And I knew that they were not prepared for it. If we had insisted that there should be a rerun, just one run had taken us eight hours. If we are stuck to our, our guns, to have a rerun, I then could see, and they, they said they would not want to have a rerun. But but that is what we ought to have done because uh, it was inconclusive. In fact, it's the reason why that uh, after the three failed attempts, we asked the marshal department to bring in the police. When the police were coming, they came with the with soldiers. And the who, 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 asked, who asked? Who asked? Um, who requested for the police to be brought in? Please, who requested for the police to be uh, brought in? I asked the marshal department that we have had three field attempts. Can you bring in the police? Because we work the police, uh, the marshal department, the test that works closely with the police. I said, can you bring in the police to protect the balloting? As I said, when the police were coming, unfortunately, we had soldiers there, uh, well armed, and I thought that also was not the best of arrangements. And my colleagues then said that we should have uh, the police and the uh, soldiers uh, move from the arena of the chamber before we could continue with the voting. At that time, I could see the strong resolve to frustrate the voting process. However, we said, okay, let them retrieve, uh, let them recline to the, to the uh, extreme corners of the chamber so that if there was anything, they could assist us to protect the voting process but as i've said uh fast forward again to after the voting and the count and what we were consulting to do so we conferred amongst ourselves and we came to the final agreement that yes we didn't need to frustrate the system any longer if we insist on rerun and they say they don't want a rerun uh, certainly the rerun would have been the most logical thing that we ought to have done. But as I said, these heads of state have been there for this long time. 
and we were not the nation was no longer going to be patient with us to do this thing so after the engagement with uh, uh, the various political parties and um, ourselves also doing same we came to a final determination that okay let's by reason of compromise adopt Papi as the uh, speaker of parliament indeed at the outset i was even proposing that yes let's deem him to have been elected he will be there for two weeks and after two weeks when i thought that we would have cooler heads mm -hmm. then we could go back and do the um the voting the election it, of is, a speaker is it something which is um practicable is it something you're still looking at it's, um, no so that then it was rejected by the ndc okay uh -huh. so we had to drop it then her another so i mean several things came several options came up and then subsequently we said okay let's then adopt backing as having been uh, as as the speaker of, of of parliament so then we had to find an appropriate language to capture the sentiments it is the reason why because the others provide that when the there are two contestants the person with the larger uh, number of votes yeah. would uh, be pronounced as having been elected by the house to take the chair as the speaker right in this case you couldn't say that Bagwin had the number the highest number because you have to pronounce that okay has this Bagwin has this and on account of the fact that he has a larger number right let's assume that out of the 138 one goes spoiled but would have, would have had 137 yes. against uh, okay 136 yes right yes and but would have been pronounced elected yes if but if three or four votes got uh, uh rejected mm -hmm. but would have had a lower number to case 136 because we knew of ways what we didn't know was bad things right so so it means that so two of the votes were unaccounted for come again it means two of the votes were unaccounted for some of the votes were unaccounted for okay right so as as i said the end of the consultations we came to the conclusion that okay look we can't continue to hold the nation uh, to ransom the way things were going so numbers will not be referred to the clerk would just make uh, uh, an announcement to the effect that yes we had met the house had met to elect a speaker and if you listen to what he said, he said, we had met to elect the speaker. The process leading to the, um, to the, uh, the declaration of the results mm -hmm. could not be concluded on account of an unfortunate incident that happened. Leadership then entered the fray to consult amongst themselves out of which i make this determination accordingly accordingly um but the honorable back thing is declared the uh, is declared to occupy to take the chair of this house as the speaker okay. so no numbers were referred to okay it was because of the consensus that we were building so it's, it's not and like he, he got indeed mm -hmm. the ndc side uh had before coming yeah agreed that if they if they lost you contest the first deputy speaker and or, and if they lost contest the second deputy speaker so they had their list mm. right mm. yes but on account of what happened we then decided that we would take the two that by way of building the consensus the first deputy speaker and they agreed not to contest and the second deputy speaker they agreed also not to contest that one so it was an agreement right thing. yeah so all the things that happened was on account of the consultations that we had and i'm just re-emphasizing the point that that figure 138 that's been put out there that the ndc had 138 is most most uh, sorry not the ndc back being hard is most most untrue okay so that is that's that's the truth right uh, um, and one other thing that uh was bugging the mind of um a lot of the citizenry was the fact that the uh, asin north uh mp despite being uh mp like despite being served got the um opportunity to uh take part in the the votes yes the the clerk 
Yeah. An issue was raised for the clerk to make a pronouncement on it. And the clerk said, yes, as the clerk department, mm -hmm. I've been served due process. And the content of it was that the high court at Cape Coast had determined that the person has placed an interim injunction yeah. on the Ascent North MP. Mm -hmm. So that makes him ineligible to participate to, in this. Yes, exactly. Now, the NDC's position was that the person had not been said. Dr. Ayini raised issue about the fact that the constitution and indeed our orders provide that uh, members of parliament, the clerk to parliament, the speaker, cannot be served with processes from the courts whilst on their way to parliament or on their way from parliament and so on. INA was right on that. Except that in the context, what it means is that if the clerk of parliament has um, a process against him as an individual, mm. if a member of parliament has, a, um, you know, a case against him uh, as an individual, he cannot be served on his way to parliament or outside parliament uh, or, or on his way from parliament just as is the case for the clerk for the speaker okay but in this case it was not against the clerk in person the clerk had been served because he represents the institution okay and the clerk can only be served in that in that capacity if he's at work as representing the institution the clerk cannot be served in his house yeah. On, on on weekends on Sundays for instance okay it should be have to be on working hours mm. so in the context Dr. Yine you know right. if the constitution should be understood possibly Dr. Yine was completely wrong in his own understanding of okay. the law however that was not the time to go into this because if you want to then litigate just on that you have to go to the Supreme Court Which for the to Supreme be? Court to okay. make a determination okay when was that going to be made Meanwhile, we needed to, to, to do Make the a voting. decision on that. And it's the reason why the clerk subsequently came in because the NDC was insisting that he was not allowed to participate in the voting. They, as a group, will not participate and they will not allow the voting to go on. I mean, at the point, it was physicality against rationalization of the sequence of the events. Mm. So the clerk then said, I've heard you. There is another provision in the Constitution which relates to Article 105, which provides that if a person knows that he's not required to be in Parliament mm -hmm. and also to uh, take part in the processes and the business of Parliament, just take part in the businesses and the process of Parliament, knowing that he is not to take part. A person commits an offence and it will be contentious of Parliament and uh, whatever Parliament even does to that person, would not be a bar against the cause taking additional punishment because in this case it was contempt of part of, of the courts mm. that he was even committing yeah. so the clerk road uh you know gave that bold indication to the person that if you did that that is also another sequel to whatever business that you engage yourself in so, no, so no, no. again as part mm. of the compromises that we are building we then decided uh, to wash our hands of it. In fact, the clerk, by what he said, said that Parliament was washing his hands of it. If he decides to do it, it will be his own affair. So it now that part uh, of the consensus have... that we have been. Okay. Uh, I was going to ask that uh, now that the uh, dust have seemingly settled, what, what is going to be uh, the way forward in that regard, um, as far well, as the MP is concerned? Well, the, the processes in the court, as far as the MP is concerned, will continue right mm. and um, for the unfortunate events i think we as a house the leadership will have to come together and determine the way forward so that those incidents would never have any further procreation in the house okay because it really inflicted a mortal wound on parliament and parliamentarians and also on our democracy, Ghanaian democracy, I think yesterday's events would represent a sore point in the history of Ghana's parliament and Ghana's democracy. Can you, can you please um, relate to us some of the uh, uh, 
punishment or some of the things that uh, may be meted out to the um, legislators who were in involved in this uh, atrocity? Leaders are supposed to assist in keeping order yeah. in the house. Yeah. When you have leaders themselves involving themselves in these matters, it becomes a real difficulty. The whips are supposed in charge of discipline. Mm. If you have whips who themselves, you know, show tendencies of indiscipline, again, there is a problem, right? Yes. So, as I said, we're going to meet on Friday, and I guess when we meet, we'll have to go into conclave, maybe close sitting, or committee of the whole on this. No, but I mean, I, I, I want to uh, have a, a fair idea whether there'll be a suspension or fining, or what, what are some of the things we are, we are looking at? And that's why I'm saying that at this stage, you can't. it will not lie in my mouth to okay. make a bold pronouncement, Okay. right? Mm. So, we have to meet. Um, these are early days yet, uh, and um, what happened was even before the swearing in of members of parliament. At that time, we were only members of parliament elect, yes. technically. Yes. We are not members of parliament. Okay. So there is a thin line, but we, we, that's why I'm saying that we have to talk to ourselves first, and we see going forward what it is that must be done. And and, and when when are we looking at this happening? I said, um, you know. The speaker pronounced after the motion that I moved yeah. in the house yesterday in the swearing in of the president. The speaker pronounced that um, after I moved the motion for us to adjourn and reassemble on uh, Friday next week. Okay. The speaker adjourned on that note. We meet on Friday. Okay. And I believe we can discuss this, this matter. The unfortunate events on Friday amongst ourselves and come to some determination on the way forward. Right, and one, one final thing. Uh, so during the inauguration ceremony, we realized that uh, the members of the um, NDC caucus uh, were absent uh, the entire period. What, what, what are your comments on that? Well, I think it was most unfortunate um, because at conflicting signals that uh, uh, only the leadership will be there and then uh, at another point I was told that uh, they may not be there because they are contesting the uh, the results okay. uh, in respect of the president in 2013 when we sent our matter to court yeah. in respect of the then uh, purported win of uh, uh, President John Dramani indeed and in truth we boycotted the swearing in of John Ramani Mahama. Yes. Uh, so if they are saying that they are taking the matter to court and on account of that they are also boycotting, um, I, I, I really wouldn't uh, fault them because we had done a similar thing. Except that, apart from everything else, when we had the swearing in at Independence Square, before going, we were told that people, some people had gone to assume the seats none MPs had gone to assume the seats of the members of parliament. That was another compelling reason why we boycotted the, cer the ceremony. Okay. But apart from the fact that we had sent the matter to court. Okay. In this case, on account of these events, we had brought the, the sitting to the presence of parliament when we had had this uh, tent constructed for the purpose. And I thought that would be a mitigating factor, unfortunately. He elected not to be there. Uh, it's a yesterday event, and they are now saying that it was purely on account of the fact that it, they are taking the results of uh, the declaration of the president to court. So they wouldn't want to have anything to do with it. Um, maybe um, when these things go on, don't forget that when it happened, and the president, the then president, nominated persons for vetting. We went on to say that wouldn't be part of it. I want to see what will happen thereafter. Okay. All right. Thank you so much for speaking with us. Um, Thank you for having me once again. Okay.